The mandible is one x-ray exam that doesn't really require any kind of memorization of positions or tube angulations at all. Uh, in fact, if you look at the positioning descriptions in the Merrill and Bontrager books, they're really kind of confusing. It's hard to tell what they're saying, really. And since the mandible is not really a commonly ordered exam anymore, it's it's kind of easy to forget exactly what the books say. Um, the mandible, it's actually a very easy exam since you can essentially see or at least easily palpate the whole bone uh, or the outline of the bone anyway on, on basically any patient at all. Um, and so this is where what I call this is where your x-ray vision really comes into play. And we're going to talk about the axial lateral views because that's that's the one that we typically uh, uh, get confused on with the mandible. Uh, the other two views that we usually look at are, are uh, a standard uh, PA view uh, and then a, uh, a Towns view to, to look at, uh, at, the, at, the, at the rami. Uh, but anyway, we're going to look at the axial lateral views, which essentially is, is what we would like to see on a lateral view. Um, in an ideal world, we would like to look at a perfectly lateral view of each side of the mandible with a nice outline of each TMJ and ramus and and body and uh, uh, and coronoid process uh, free of any superimposition uh, but unfortunately unless basically unless your patient's missing half of half their jaw uh, a true quote unquote lateral view will always show one side superimposed on the other so what we have to do to compensate then is we have to tilt the patient's head or the or the x-ray tube and and also rotate the patient's head just a little bit um, and then the question is well how much tilt and how much rotation and this is where you really need to use your x-ray vision instead of just relying on what the book says uh, what you need to try and do is see in your mind both sides of the mandible and envision their relationship to each other as well as their relationship to the C-spine. So we're going to have a look at the right side. And what you need to do is uh, tilt the head or else angle the tube just enough so that the left side of the mandible projects slightly above the right but at the same time not so much that you're looking at a foreshortened tangential kind of view like this. It's actually pretty surprising how little tilt you actually need Anyway, once you've established your tilt or your tube angula angulation, the next step, and, and this is one that, that we tend to not really think about, is that we need to think about what part of the mandible we're really looking at when we're doing these axial-lateral views. Most of the time what we're looking at is the TMJ and ramus and part of the, the body, really. Uh, when the natural tendency for a person, when you ask them to tilt their head to the side, uh, the, the natural tendency is for them to also kind of turn their head in the, pos in the direction of the tilt. And for the axiolateral mandible x-ray, uh, a lot of times this is exactly the opposite of, of what we're looking for. Uh, what we need to have the patient do, if possible, is actually rotate their head, either not rotate their head at all, or else rotate the head away from the cassette or the bucky just a little bit and then raise up the chin slightly. And how much rotation, uh, what we need to do again is use your x-ray vision. Uh, the amount of rotation will determine what part of the mandible you're looking at. So, uh, and, and I think the Bontrager books actually uh, talk about this as well, but uh, basically if you give no rotation at all, what you're going to do is you're going to get a pretty good clear view of the ramus and the TMJ. Uh, if you rotate the head uh, just a, maybe just a little bit away from the cassette of the bucky, it's going to really open up that TMJ really nice. If your if your rotation of the head is toward the cassette or bucky, what you're going to do is and you're going to superimpose this TMJ here over the C-spine, but at the same time, it's really going to give you a, a nice clear picture of the body, and then a little bit more rotation towards the bucky is going to give you a nice picture of the mentum. I think it's about, according to the book, it's 45 degrees uh, shows you the mentum, about 30 or 25 degrees shows you the body, and about, uh, I think they say 10 to 15 uh, gives you a general 
survey of the mandible, whereas no rotation shows you the ramus and TMJ. Uh, from it's been my experience that most doctors actually like to see the TMJ. Uh, it might vary at your hospital, but it's been my experience. TMJ is always a good thing to see here. Uh, one final note. This is this is something that just kind of as a side note, I'll I'll go ahead and call this the the Jones method. Uh, you might notice that in many instances when you tilt the head what you're actually doing is you're causing the hyoid hyoid bone to superimpose uh, over over the, the mandible just anterior to the gonion. Uh, if what you can do if the patient is cooperative uh, if they can hold their head in place and, and really listen to what you're saying uh, what you can do is you can actually depress the hyoid out of the way by having the patient without moving their head or jaw just have them hum the lowest note that they possibly can and this actually presses that bone down and uh, if they can cooperate then great if not you know it's not really that big of a deal but that is the axial lateral mandible I hope that it has been helpful